All right, well, we're going to have a double this time with two presenters. The title of the spark is Why Young Girls Need Help to Create with Dana Ritterbush and Lily Rutledge Ellison. So, some interesting things. Lily is going to be appearing in the TBS show in January called King of the Nerds. That's pretty cool. And Dana has 70,000 followers on her YouTube channel. So some very cool things there. They are based in Denver. Lily follows the education track and Dana works in marketing. They both are passionate about representation of gender in media. So let's make sure both these mics work and welcome. Hello. All right. Good talk so far, huh? Yeah, pretty good. We pick up sand. It's good. <laughs> okay, so the art of storytelling is possibly humanity's oldest form of influencing a culture. When you think of the stories we hear, the literature we read, they're didactic. We're always learning a lesson, the values, the morals of our society. In a way, storytellers shape our reality. Visual media has, by and large, replaced the need for the spoken word story. Now we consume all of our stories in movies, television shows, commercials, and we absorb it. The good, the bad, the tone, the subtext. But how often do we check facts on our nightly news? So we want to know, who is running our matrix? <laughs> Who's writing our code? Who is writing the stories that are shaping how we perceive reality? Now, in the perfect reality, uh, the stories would be told by, you know, a pretty equal representation of people, and women make up about 51% of the world's population. So it stands to reason that, you know, around 50% of the stories would be told by women. We've got interesting perspectives and stories to tell. Yeah, so let's start with probably the most influential form of storytelling, motion pictures. The Academy Awards started in 1929. It took 47 years for a female to be nominated for Best Director. Well, it's less than 50. Yeah, well, it took 34 <laughs> years for a woman to actually win Best Director. But let's focus more on writing. <laughs> so uh, in the past 13 years, 85% of the nominations for Best Original Screenplay have gone to men. 15% of those women nominated have seen one win. <laughs> Sofia Coppola's Lost in Translation. And visual media is not the only medium with issues. Let's look at The New Yorker. In the past four years, the number of female authors reviewed by The New Yorker fell solidly between 27 and 29%. You guys, that's less than a third. Ugh. So uh, with new digital forays into content creation with free websites like YouTube, we've actually seen the percentage of female creators jump over 50%. There are more girls creating, and it's kind of thanks to the internet. And you think that this newfound rep equal representation would be embraced by the community, but honestly, there's been a lot of gender-specific backlash against these, girl female, these, these young female creators. Um, they live in a world now um, with a lot of backlash, but what, what would our ideal be? <laughs> Um, so imagine what could be. It could be a world where we're all working together, a system of equality, where there's no hoops, and girls actually have the freedom to write and produce and market their own ideas. However, it's not that simple. Uh, we live in a world where on the average girl's movie review or vlog, you often see boobs or GTFO. They're objectified. They're objectified and marginalized 100% of the time. And Tina Fey and Amy Poehler brought a lot of attention to the issue. They talk about um, basically being in competition with everyone instead of pigeonholing yourself to feel like you're in competition with only other female content creators. It's an equal playing field now. We're all competing with each other. <laughs> So what does our ideal world look like? Our happy place. Where women can help women with their ideas and their visions, and our boys and girls can create side-by-side -side content that is from everyone and for everyone. So in general, we see bullying happening for boys in more of a face-to-face -face venue in school, but girls are receiving their negative interactions online, whether it be a computer or a mobile phone. And it's not always about school. 
Oftentimes, where girls will get bullied online is in the forums that they specifically go to to express themselves creatively, so like DeviantArt or YouTube. And um, it's an epidemic of cyberbullying. It really is. In fact, instances of cyberbullying from last year alone have increased by over 200%. Wow. So we live in a digital age. Our kids are going to be experiencing their lives, their friendships, their all loves, online. Their creative expression, their all creative of it's going to be online. Everything's online. I, for one, I know all of you, all of us. We want to make that a climate of community and support. How so do we do it? We start by building their self-efficacy. <sighs> mommy, mommy, I want to make a movie, and it's going to be about a booger, and the booger falls in love. That is so creative. How can I help? It's a perfect example. When your girls come to you with something creative, foster that in them, but also teach them how to accept constructive criticism and also model the appropriate ways to give criticism to others while still respecting their work. And deal with haters. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Very good.